Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we're about to get into Alex Soth's Masterclass photo book, uh, Sleeping by the Mississippi. His first photo book, which kind of launched him uh, into photographic stardom. Um, before we get into the video, just a quick announcement. I've set up a Patreon account if you're interested in contributing. I've created two levels of membership. One is I call the offset membership and that's uh, you get early access to what I'll be reviewing um, and you'll get a vote on a pre-selected group of books that I'll be reviewing. So you'll get to participate in that. Um, and then the next tier, which is called the Photo Revier membership, you get everything in the offset, plus you'll be able to participate in monthly discussions on photo books and photography. I imagine we'll talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Alex Soth, Sleeping by the Mississippi. If you like, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this with your photo friends, your teacher friends, you know, any your photo curious friends. Uh, and Alex Soth's a great way to start out. Sleeping by the Mississippi, hugely important book. You might think you know it. Hopefully this video will uh, elaborate on some details that you didn't know about. Um, I have a lot of sources for this one. It's a very important book, not just in photo book world, but also to Alex Soth's career. He also has his own YouTube channel if you want to check it out. He talks about uh, photo books um, and some of his work, but he's a very interesting, very smart photographer. He's worth checking out his channel. Um, the Patreon uh, funds are going to go towards purchase of new equipment, um, budget more time for this so I can make more and more of them. They're hugely helpful for my own creative practice. Um, and I have some new ideas where I'd like to include photo book makers and photographers, and I'd like to be able to pay them for their time um, to participate in these uh, photo book reviews, maybe. Uh, but here we have Alex Soth's very first photo book, uh, Sleeping by the Mississippi. This is a republication a second edition of Mac. This was this book was originally published by Steidel uh, in 2004. The Steidel edition is actually uh, very similar, of course, to the second edition. The cover image is just a different crop of the same image. This Mac edition also has two new photographs, this being one of those new photographs. Um, let's see, looking at my notes here, uh, Mac did two printings of these books. Um, uh, the original has 46 pictures. This one has 48 pictures. Alex Soth included two more uh, um, photographs. Alex Soth is very big on groups of images. Um, he doesn't think that photographs are linear or are narrative by their nature. And part of what he enjoys is pairing images together to create kind of a, a poetic narrative, a lyrical uh, body of work. Sleeping by the Mississippi. Two contributors for the essays, Patricia Hamphill and Ann Wilkes Tucker. Alex Soth was also shocked by the success of this photo book. Um, uh, the Whitney uh, biannual that he was included in, the publication of this book, in interviews afterwards he talks about how he was really uh, happy and pleased and surprised by how much this book uh, took off. It was shot over five years. Uh, Patricia Hample, who writes this introduction, this is worth reading. She's a very accomplished writer. She's a professor at University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, Guggenheim, NEA Grant, uh, McKnight, MacArthur. The introduction shares the story of her and her father driving around, I believe it's Minneapolis, um, after a big flood in 1965 and the damage that flood did um, to the Italian and the Czech neighborhoods in the city. Basically how the the area around the Mississippi and Minneapolis became kind of a dump. Um, but it's very, it's worth reading. I think the message of this introduction is uh, that you want to try to see things anew as a person and a photographer. A lot of detritus, a lot of seemingly 
unphotographic material. Uh, she talks about her dad taking mental frames as he's driving through the neighborhoods after the flood. It's very good. Here we have a quote from Charles Lindbergh, which I'll read. Over and over again, I fall asleep with my eyes open, knowing I'm falling asleep, unable to prevent it. When I fall asleep this way, my eyes are cut off from ordinary mind as though they were shut, but they become directly connected to a new extraordinary mind, which grows increasingly competent to deal with the impressions. Charles Lindbergh writing about the 22nd hour of his transatlantic flight in the spirit of St. Louis. The cover, or the title, Sleeping by the Mississippi, might well be called Dreaming by the Mississippi, because Alex Soth views sleeping as a gateway to dreaming. Um, and there's a lot of references to beds and mattresses and sleep in this book uh, because of this. And so Charles Lindbergh being a major figure in the Midwest and American history, and one of the uh, kind of metaphoric characters in this book. So very uh, classic layout. Um, Photograph on the right, and we have a simple text on the left. Um, Peter's houseboat, Winona, Minnesota. Some skulls on the houseboat, frozen lake, dash of color right there. Now this is kind of a funny, as Alex Soth might say, a dumb photograph. Not this one in particular, but photographs that are funny, they're simple. We just had a, so we just saw a Charles Lindbergh reference, and now we're seeing a man in a mechanic suit holding airplanes named Charles. There are details about a quarter of these photographs that Alex Soth includes um, at the end of the book. I'm going to hold off on sharing those till the end because what's interesting about it is you create your own kind of poetic experience understanding these photographs, and then at the end you get the reality of them, and it's really interesting to look at a body of work from an interpretive standpoint and then from a documentary standpoint. But I love this. It's like a little kid holding planes he's, he's proud of. Charles Lindbergh's Boyhood Bed, Little Falls, Minnesota. This is the bed um, that Charles Lindbergh would say he slept in when he would dream of flying planes and he would hear planes flying. What I like about Alex Soth's titling of these images is it brings a significance to the image. It's just a beautiful photograph of a bed, but when we read the title, we understand the significance. He has a really good, I would say, philosophy of titling images, too, where he might come up with a title before he even makes a photograph. Religion is a constant theme in this book. Religion, prostitution, prisoners, um, uh, the river, they're all kind of products of the, the culture that the river runs through. This, Sheila Leach, Lake Indian Reservation, Minnesota, when you look closely at this book, I actually looked at it with a magnifying glass because um, the way that he's photographing grants such detail. It's a young woman with her arms spread out uh, in a crucifixion-like manner, and you see signs of maybe she's in a church, partial uh, body of Christ on the cross there, and then spattered throughout her sweatshirt are Bible verses. You see a sound system and a Bible up here, and her sweatshirt is a, a community college sweatshirt. But I love the gestures of handwriting on this shirt. You know, she's wearing literally her beliefs on her sleeve, um, and she's staring right at the camera. It's a really kind of confrontational, yet warm photograph. You know, she's burying herself before the viewer, but she doesn't look upset, she doesn't look intimidating. And then I love this transition from Sheila to this image. I kind of chuckle at this image, uh, these power lines coming up from the ground and they're circling around the cross. Uh, but if 
if you know the story of the crucifixion, um, Christ's legs while he was on the cross were actually not broken. Um, he was pierced in his side by a spear because the Roman soldiers figured that he was dead already. And when they pierced him, they understood that he was dead. And so it's kind of funny that this Christ's leg is broken. That might be a detail missed uh, if you're not aware of the, uh, the crucifixion story. This image, I think, is the most striking landscape in the whole book. Um, my eye has always gone towards the actual gas station. Um, it was only looking closely at this book for the review and reading articles that I noticed the cemetery in the background. Kim, Polish Palace, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Initially, what caught my eye about this uh, image that I love is there's two drinks, but she's alone, and her loneliness is like magnified by the Valentine's romantic gear around her. You'll notice the lighting in this photograph too. It's just, uh, it's amazing. Um, Alex Soth is, he must be using a flash in these images. In all the interviews, I don't hear him talk a lot about uh, technical issues um, in interviews and writing. But I love in all of these images, you have this full lighting that illuminates all the details that are so important to the work. Um, but, uh, and you see some, some natural lighting, some atmospheric lighting that still preserves a mood. You see the subjects but there's information everywhere for you to, to glean. I love this image. I might be saying that a lot in this book review. It's just like a riot of texture. Celebrity Room, Brainerd, Minnesota. If anyone, maybe you can let me know in the comments, knows who this individual is, I would love to find out. Um, I've Google image searched this picture, this portion of the picture, I've read a lot of uh, interviews and details about the book and watched a lot of uh, interviews with him. I've read the notes in the back of the book, but I can't figure out who that celebrity is. Lenny, Minneapolis. Before you know the details of this image, it's very odd and almost awkward. Um, the dog looks more scared than the man, Lenny, in the photograph. Um, but what I like about it is there's, it feels like there's two people staring back at you, the dog and Lenny. But then a nice little detail here, Lenny has a tattoo of a dog on his bicep. And there's kind of this polite environment, but let, we see Lenny here in his underwear, shirtless, um, no pants. I like the contrast between the politeness of the plates and the plant, and then how kind of bare he is. Immaculate Conception Church. I love how the landscape painting is included in this book centered on landscape. Um, it's a very cool image in color and light, but very warm. There's an empty chair there for you. There's a picture blessing you, a doorway. In interviews, Soth will talk about scenes like this as kind of play sets for him. Um, he went in um, at the time and was willing to move things around. He said he might not do that now, but he had a kind of a freshness to his work during this period and a, um, a playfulness um, that wasn't so stiff and rigid. And I think it really brings a lot to the body of work. This is actually the first clear picture of a river in the whole sequence. Here we have a cross make another appearance. And I love this prison guard. You can see he's kind of slightly out of frame. And a detail in the back of this book. That isn't a spoiler. Uh, these prisoners are named. Um, this is Terry, Keith, William, 
and Randy. A keen observer would notice this is where the cover image comes from, a portion of this photograph. Um, and of course, a great detail down here, a picture within a picture, you got all of those. This is an Ansel Adams photograph, the Teton and Snake River, Grand Teton National Park, Wyoming. Ansel Adams made that photograph in 1942, and you see all the other um, images are removed from this abandoned location, which South is photographing a lot of in this book. Um, but that Ansel Adams photograph remains for who knows why. But I love this little scrap of newspaper here on the wall. It says folklore. And uh, folklore next to all these missing images and a Ansel Adams photograph that, you know, a, a photographer who almost reinvented landscape photography. Um kind of the different correlations you can draw between the folklore there and there. But also this book is about the myth of the Mississippi River. I don't mean that in a critical sense. I mean all the cultural adaptations of the Mississippi River. Uh, this river runs through so many different parts of the country and each part has its own kind of relation to it for good or for bad. This is a photograph specifically that Soth talks about <clears throat> working in the space and moving things. Um, he says he, maybe he was a little too obsessed about placing everything the right way. Uh, each picture is kind of like bam, 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 each still life. But he noticed this house from the road, came in and photographed it. Um, my favorite detail in this book is this little hole in the ground right there. If you can peek through. Very odd. Very spooky. <clears throat> the Reverend and Margaret's bedroom. So another still life where the lighting is so amazing to me. You know, this plush chair and the hat. Um, it's illuminating all these details, but it doesn't feel garish. And he's even able to expose and meter correctly for the light bulb. So just some very skilled uh, technical work in photographs like this. There are 29 different portraits, as I counted, um, but great use of flash. This photograph speaks to how most people use photographs, which is in a vernacular sense. All of these portraits hanging up to remind someone of others in their life. They're not they might be artistic, but they're not precious works of art. They're used in the sense that a photograph is used, it's looked at, it's held. It bears the marks of its history, as one photo historian says. Sunshine, Memphis, Tennessee. There are interesting stories uh, about this image. Alex Soth has talked about it a lot. I don't want to spoil what's in the back of the book, but, you know, it's, this feels very much like a Manet, uh, Olympia, uh, Odalisque. There's kind of an eroticism to this image, uh, but also a coldness, the way that uh, Sunshine, this person in the photograph, is looking uh, at the viewer. And then, as is common with many self photographs in this book, he's using swing and tilts and shifts to hone a perspective. So we have this um, focus, this focal plane that's following all down her body when in a normal, not a normal, in a typical camera, a rangefinder, a 35 millimeter, a digital camera, any camera without bellows, you would get something in focus that's a consistent distance from the subject. So maybe this portion of the bed, her hip, and then this portion of the bed. Here, he's manipulating that focal plane, so it runs across her whole body. Then the, I think the beautiful effect of that is how out of focus the background is. 
very engaging image, this woman just looking directly at you. Looks like a kind of a seedy, um, cheap, uncomfortable motel room. Hotel, Dallas City, Illinois. Very geometric. It's hard. It's almost like this uh, door is a monolith just standing there. There's also a faint um, cartoon of a figure right here in the door. Almost surrealistic in the composition. This image, um, very gripping. It's a mattress and water, Helena, Arkansas. This fits the introduction of the book really well. Um, I think about the the mattress being a metaphor or a vehicle, as Seth says. The mattress is a vehicle for dreaming. And here we see it in a swamp covered in water. It's almost like a pun on the book title. Soth is also very interested in graffiti. So he's using, to get to the heart of this book, he's using the Mississippi River as a kind of a vague path that he's wandering down to photograph communities alongside of it. He's not sticking to the river specifically. The project's not about the river. It's about all these people, uh, these failed dreams, um, these small towns along the river that Alex Soth thinks are worth photographing and identifies with being from the Midwest. Title, uh, Sugar, kind of matches that other title, Sunshine. Very closed off space. Um, I actually think this image feels distorted. The chair feels so wide. Um, it's a, it feels like a tight space and there's no light coming in here. No one from the outside can see what's going on. We have a, a dirty magazine down here on the floor. Very interesting shapes. The L of the mirror. The manipulation of space in the chair. Then the next page turn, this is titled Mother and Daughter. Just like we've seen in the other photographs, um, there's a, a little bit of that naivete that Soth talks about. There are things cropped out of here that he mentions now he wouldn't crop out. A um, bit of the mother's toe is missing. But here we have that focal plane that shifts from the front all the way back to their body. Um, the toe is in focus and her face is in focus. We see a cigarette, just a, another image of, you're looking at these two figures, these two women in this photograph, they're looking directly back at you. I think that's one of the gifts of this book that Soth is photographing these interesting people, but they're not just uh, standing before the camera. There's a, an agency to these photographs. And to a greater or lesser extent, these are posed images, but there doesn't feel like there's any irony or mockery um, in here. The, the people he photographs feel like people. Painted uh, nails, but then a band-aid and a cigarette and a tattoo. It's a worn setting with a clean facade, but it, it feels worn out. Here we have uh, the female figure, figures, and then we have, I think, an interesting transition here is a dismembered male figure. Another photograph of graffiti as well. It's a dismembered male body after we've seen two female bodies. I looked at this photograph uh, for years. Um, before I looked closely enough to notice a kind of interesting small detail here um, is this man in the foreground is missing a leg. And remember our previous image was a kind of a dismembered male body graffiti on a wall. And here we have someone missing a leg fishing. Very uh, crude sim in perspective too, I thought. That kind of God's eye view. Johnny Cash's Boyhood Home. 
might remind you of the song Five Feet High and Rising. Flooding is a consistent theme in this book and in the text. Very famous photograph, Joshua, Angola State Prison, Louisiana. So Angola was originally a plantation that was bought and turned into a prison. And the prisoners lived in the slave quarters. It has this very long history in Louisiana, um, especially for the farm that operates there. The easy title for this image would have been Preacher Man, but here we see that Alex Soth gives the name Joshua. And in many interviews, you see Alex Soth kind of praised when this book first comes out with his ability to, even though he's so shy and he mentions being an introvert, he's able to connect with people and get into places that you normally wouldn't be able to photograph. Um, people's houses, that photograph with Lenny, he's in his house, Lenny's not wearing any clothes. Um, Angola State Prison, photographing a prisoner. Um, another shot, uh, this woman's name's Frankie, um, whose brother is Jerry Lee Lewis, and cousin is Jimmy Swagger. Well, here we have a, another figure kind of laying down, thank you, in, in a sleeping bag, thinking about that idea of uh, sleeping and dreaming. Another light bulb. There are many themes in this image that have visual kind of punctuations that have been compared to Robert Frank and Walker Evans. I found light bulbs to be a recurring theme. Of course, mattresses and bed stands, people laying down, but also these still lifes here um, that are people but unpeopled at the same time. We see these images of Martin Luther King here. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Another hat draped here. But that flash and that that view camera that he's using just gets all these details that speak of humanity, all these worn marks, these tattered edges on the prints, papers. Luxora, Arkansas. So this image also is a visual representation of the introduction um, of how certain areas of the Mississippi River have these banks that are just filled with kind of junk. And this scene that Alex Soth has photographed. Empty chairs, empty beer bottles, an American flag. This book's very American in the sense that Alex Soth has various cultures in America represented in this book, but also he's um, relying and looping in cultural artifacts. Uh, Charles Lindbergh, um, Huckleberry Finn, um, the native history of the Mississippi River, means uh, uh, great water or big water, uh, father of waters different tribes um, throughout the Midwest. Jim, Wax Museum, Hannibal, Missouri. This has a whole fascinating history behind it. So this character um, looks very menacing. It looks very offensive. Um, garish. It's this very unusual wax museum in Hannibal, Missouri that has wax representations of characters from the Huckleberry Finn story. This is Jim from that story. Um, I was doing some other research into this museum, which I think is now a haunted attraction. Jim's usually wearing a straw hat. He's not here. Um, but um, this was likely a wax figure of the devil that was painted black to act as the Jim character in this larger ensemble of Huckleberry Finn characters, but in the upward lighting, that's not Alex Soth, that's actually the, the Wax Museum install had a very similar lighting. 
This wax museum was also closed for a period of time. So it had this whole ensemble of characters. So this uh, scene, just a little bit of a preview to the end notes of the book, is actually around the area where the singer-songwriter Jeff Buckley's body uh, missing or where it was discovered. Um, him and a friend were on the banks of the Mississippi and he waded in up to his waist and some waves came along and his friend never saw him again. So it's a very kind of empty image. But if you've been to Memphis, you've seen this pyramid, uh, which used to be where the Grizzlies played. It's That pyramid is its own kind of weird symbol of failed dreams. Um, a recurring theme in this book is Alex Oath asks his subjects about themselves, what their dreams were, if they have any. A lot of them either stopped having dreams or never pursued those dreams. This pyramid is now uh, a Bass Pro Shop. I think it's the biggest Bass Pro Shop in the world, which says a lot because there are lots of Bass Pro Shops. Some more uh, references to vernacular images, how most people use photography. Not that most people print anymore, but most people are photographing themselves or others. You have this great camera uh, pointing back at the viewer. Uh, this image, Bonnie, with a photograph of an angel. I thought this photograph kind of represented another article of faith um, that we see from a subject or a sitter. We have um, uh, Christ here on a blanket, someone dressed as a choir or um, performer, church choir, or a pastor maybe. And then we have this woman with this sculpted haircut and this gilded frame uh, that she's saying is a photograph of an angel in the clouds. But I think this photograph is a great example of what I love about Alex Soth's photographs is that there's a bit of a smile on her face. Um, there's not an awkwardness. There's not a self-consciousness in the sitter um, because of the sentiment and the way that Soth photographs individuals, which is interesting because even though he meets these people, he spends sometimes several hours with them, he talks with them despite his shyness, he's still not completely comfortable with the portraits that he makes um, despite all these kind of safeguards and interesting qualities about them. But this woman's looking forthrightly into the camera, a bit of a smile, showing uh, an article of faith. Uh, she believes she saw an angel in the sky and she's showing Alex Soth. I love that genuine um, attitude that this photograph has. Another kind of symbol or reference to death here, we have in memories of Sister and Pimp, uh, Mr. and Miss Smith taxi cab driver uh, in an oven. And Shotgun Lounge, Greenville, Mississippi. This is a photograph of a street preacher who had been preaching on this corner for, I believe, over maybe t almost two decades um, by the time Soth made this image. Um, I think this is the only awkward photograph in the whole book. Um, I'm not sure why. I think it might be the lighting. It's, it's very directional. Um, uh, it just doesn't match kind of the softness of the other images, and it feels a little too posed. But let me know in the comments if you feel differently. I think this is the only one, um, from my estimation, that that image stands out. The farm and goal estate prison. So one interesting thing about these pictures are the things that Alex Oath had to do to make them. Introducing himself to people like we've mentioned before. Um, these prisoners kind of speckled along the farm and Angola State Prison matching the horizon line. A 
very interesting photograph. Uh, Adeline Ash Wednesday, kind of another reference to religion in the book, or the religious traditions along the Mississippi River, kind of uh, charismatic movements, Catholicism, are just some of the ones that we've seen so far. Um, AME churches, uh, this sign of devotion, the ash on her forehead, and then you have tattoos and colored hair. A lot of interesting contrasts. Holt Cemetery. This photograph, um, it seems very painterly to me, almost like a, it all, also seems like, seems like a Justine Curlin photograph from her girl series, kind of the way the, it's a very romantic southern view, all the Spanish moss, these big trees in the cemetery, a group of people in it, um, and we see really banal kind of architecture in the background that kind of spoils or betrays the landscape. Bible study book, Vicksburg, Mississippi. So it's a kind of a handmade Bible study book in a ring binder. And I just see so much symbolism here um, uh, because of my background. So I think I see bread and Bible study. So I think about uh, uh, Christ's body being offered, a knife, kind of a reference towards violence. But then when you look closely back here, uh, on the content, the matter of the Bible study, it's a prof. It's talking about John the Baptist. It's, um, which is in the Synoptic Gospels. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke have uh, the stories of John the Baptist, who was a prophet in the wilderness, um, and you can see all the different annotations along the margins in this section of the Bible uh, study. But I also think. It's interesting to think about Alec Soth being a prophet in this wilderness, living off and inside of the land as, as he's snaking through. I don't mean for that to sound uh, messianic or putting too much on him, but the nature of this book and what he had to do put him in the wilderness a lot. And a, his, the prophetic role being, this is what he's sharing with us. All these photographs, these people, their stories, their dreams, uh, their personhood, he's the, that's the product of his travels. That's what the prophet is sharing with us. Patrick, Palm Sunday. I remember the first time I saw this photograph uh, at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Jacksonville. And it's so odd, and I didn't really understand until I looked at it more why it felt odd. It's... It's, it feels artificial. This man is in the suit that is pretty ill-fitting. It's baggy around his ankles. It looks like someone else's suit. <coughs> or a, um, a donated suit in this brand new looking Bible. He's so put together and intentional. And then there's all this kind of detritus and uh, junk around him. But he's standing firm right in the middle holding a branch, and these beautiful uh, purple blossoms above him. So there's an interesting series here of images, sequences, and so Alex Oath is big on these. He's, he's about linking these non-narrative pictures into a narrative. So we have the prophet in the wilderness. We have a photograph about Palm Sunday. Then we have here a grave with stones on top of it. Now, we know in the South that these stones need to be there because uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, has a low water table. And if it floods, things can float up. You don't want bodies floating up. That's why they're all often in vaults. But it's interesting, the parallel here with the Easter story the stones holding the body down, and in the Easter story, the stone is rolled away. And then we have here this cloud and open sky. It's looking towards heaven, maybe the resurrection, or the, I'm sorry, the ascension. A 
also think this image is interesting. It's a similar look. It's a similar location of that Jeff Buckley photograph, except here, Alex Oath has found the horizon line, and all the trees are not level. Where in the other photograph, the lighting pole was level, but everything else, or was plumb, but everything else was off. This is a really striking photograph. It's called Crystal, Eastern New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, Alex Oath has a lot of stories about these photographs. And then this one, um, he mentions it's specifically not a story. Some of these photographs took hours or a lot of work or conversation. Alex Oath says for this photograph, he met Crystal at a, a gay Easter parade. Um, Crystal is a trans woman, illuminated in pink in this really bright white room. And what's so interesting about it is kind of this princess motif on the sheets matches the dress, um, this kind of gentle uh, posture here. But it, the room that Crystal is in is so nondescript. This kind of cheap carpet, the bare walls, the donated bedspreads, um, the simplicity of the room feels that way. But here we have Crystal just looking straight into the camera. And then we have uh, Venice, Louisiana here. Venice is the southernmost point that you could drive to along the Mississippi River. It's a little town. And what I love about this is this image pairs with the earlier image, with the mattress floating in the water. This is a bed stand in the weeds. Um, that is clearly a visual theme in this book, the sleeping, the mattresses, the beds, the water. But how interesting to have found two of those things. And I think it's using and sequencing the photographs really intentionally too. This afterword uh, here is by Ann Wilkes Tucker, who was the founding or inaugural curator for the uh, uh, photography collection um, at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. So uh, that's kind of that's where I am now um, in Houston. Um, it's a really beautiful afterword that's worth reading. It's very poetic and readable, but She's uh, paralleling some of the points that Alex Soth is making in the photograph. Ann Wilkes Tucker uh, grows up in Louisiana and Baton Rouge and remembers what it was like to watch boats go up and down the Mississippi River, um, the people and the culture that make it up. She, is, she mentions in this afterword or this essay, she's at one end, she grew up at one end of the Mississippi River, <clears throat> and Alex Oath grew up at the other end. There's also a really interesting detail in here. The preacher that Robert Frank photographs by the side of the river, it's a famous photograph, a preacher holding a cross at a certain part of the Mississippi River. And uh, Wilkes Tucker knew that preacher and one day was actually baptized by that preacher. Um, it's just really funny photographic world overlap there. Um, but she grew up, she knows what Alex Oath is photographing. She writes really well about it uh, in this um, essay too. She also mentions a flood that happened in New Orleans in 1927. So we have an intro that talks about a catastrophic flood. Alex Oath's photographic body of work and then another essay that talks about a flood. So the river having this power over the land and the people around it is an interesting uh, thing to contemplate looking at these photographs. Also, the end of the river that she grew up on was very dangerous. Um, very deep and very powerful. Herman's bed. 
Kenner, Louisiana. This photograph is just another riot of color and texture and objects. Then we have a like a kind of a dirty painting next to Herman's bed here and a mirror over here. But this photograph reminded me of a Jeff Wall image you might be familiar with called Invisible Man, a lone figure um, surrounded by light bulbs. That's a reference to the novel Invisible Man. So here is the selected notes to photographs, um, which is really interesting, and I, I don't want to talk about it or mention any of the details until the end of the book, but when you're looking at the photographs and reading the texts in the front matter, you're drawing your own imaginative, poetic, lyrical story from the individuals in the picture. And then in this part of the image, or this part of the book, Alex Soth wanted to include some notes on some photographs. And I mentioned the photograph with the person, Crystal. Alex Soth mentions there really wasn't much of a story behind that. Um, but there are a lot of photographs about uh, these other uh, sitters and subjects. And I would encourage you to read these after looking at the book because then you kind of get two experiences. You get the story that you tell yourself in the book that you piece together and then you can kind of learn how truth is stranger than fiction or it's at least different than fiction. Um, uh, one of the things that is going to stick with me is Sugars, Davenport, Davenport, Iowa. So that is a, a massage parlor or a, uh, a brothel that Alex Soth went in and photographed. And he went in and photographed it. He had the chutzpah, the initiative to go in and photograph um, Sugars, Davenport, Iowa. Um, what's interesting to me about it is he was also interviewing the clients and he made a bunch of pictures inside of this uh, massage parlor and just meeting people and having conversation and making pictures. Um, there's another image, Adeline Ash Wednesday, uh, this image here. Um, the note about this photograph is that Soth found her um, after Mardi Gras, the morning after Mardi Gras, um, and there were church services going on in New Orleans. She was outside, and so started a conversation with her, and she said she wasn't even Catholic, and this was actually uh, cigarette ash. So you can see with this image, especially, there's two, at least two, takeaways here. The image that you derive from the photograph, and then the details behind it. And I think, you know, that's, that's, it's not a good or a bad thing. It's an intrinsic quality of pictures. So th talks about photographs not having a beginning, middle, and end in a traditional narrative sense. He says they're anti-narrative, but he likes the tenuous task of piecing them all together to make a story. Um, but I love these details back here. I think it's... Um, it gives the book kind of a second take that a viewer can piece together after the fact. It's a very different feeling after you go through and read these. Um, you also get to understand some of the work behind them. And then this is the final photograph in the book. This is actually an additional, additional photograph he included for the Mac publication. And just ending details. Uh, this is a uh, Mac publication, first edition by Steidel. This book, my personal copy, um, is from 2017. And then these uh, end pages, are kind of this burnt orange color, were a Mac publication detail. And Alex Oath mentions how much he likes the end pages, how they kind of have a big impact on the tone of the book. Um, and then this image is the detail from the Grand Tetons, Ansel Adams photograph. Uh, 
the bottom section of the photograph and the top section of this photograph. So amazing book. I think the key to this book is that, or takeaway for me was that when I'm going through this book, I really don't think about Alex Soth at all. I'm thinking about this body of work. Um, I'm not thinking about his accomplish his, him or his accomplishments after the fact. I'm just totally uh, uh, consumed by the photographs and the potential meanings behind them, the beauty in them. Um, and I haven't had that feeling in a long time. And then for the research for this review, I, it almost feels like a sin to look at these photographs on their own. Um, I think the sequence and the experience of the book is just um, what you're what what you want. It's the higher impact. Uh, it's the it's the holistic project that Alex Soth has pieced together. Um, so, very famous book. You might think you know. Grab a copy. Dig into it. Have an experience with it. Um, it will repay you in dividends. Um, Alex South, Sleeping by the Mississippi.